I want to talk to Billy uh, just because he's again in line with our chat poll and, and took the time to call in and talk about what we asked them to call in about. So Billy okay. from Texas, he, him. Uh, let's see what, let's see what he's got to say. The CDC says that benefits of circumcisions outweigh the risks. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Uh, you, Billy, you're alive on talk. Heathen. what's up? Billy, if you're there, please talk to us. Oh, we got to get him back in the queue here. We're having a little bit of uh, issues today, but we're working on it. Billy, I think you should be able to talk to us now. Can you hear us? What's going on? Hey. There hey. we go. Hey, Billy, what's up? Hey, um, I had my son circumcised uh, because for no other reason than, than I was circumcised. But then I was having a, a discussion with somebody online, and they called me a monster. They said that I They said that I tortured and tortured my son and and after that i you know that that affected me a lot and so i i did some research um uh i talked to doctors i uh just i went to the cdc like like you said the cdc i went to their website the cdc themselves say that the benefits outweigh the risks um uh, about the the torture part i I talked to a doctor and he said that uh there's peer-reviewed scientific literature that about babies and how they're they're in shock for between four and 24 hours after they're born so that's um that's the best best time to do it is is immediately after they're born because they're in shock they don't they don't feel anything um and then uh the 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 sensitivity thing I, i talked to a doctor and he said imagine if you're petting a cat and then you have the tip of your finger surgically removed, and then a year later, whenever it's all healed, you pet the same cat. Is it like how different is it? Uh, he said that's the that would be the um, that would be you know what what it would be like uh, in, in terms of like the sensation part. And then all right. um, all as right. far as the aesthetic thing, uh, there are there are studies that that show that not, up to ninety percent of women prefer. Um, circumcised penises so yeah well you know what that's that's also a reflection of the times we live in right that's changing i think probably and you know i don't think that women are going out and dating men based on whether or not they're circumcised or or you know getting married based on whether or not or choosing choosing sex partners based on that um i you know that that could all that could flop. I mean, and who and who are the people answering these questions? I'd like to do my own poll and see right. because I've heard I've well, heard different. And, but and that's, not the, that's not the strongest yeah, point, well, Bill, point that I wanted I wanted to make. But Billy, what what caught my attention was the very first thing that you said was I had my son circumcised for no other reason than because I was circumcised. I mean, what right. justification do you have? for taking that decision away from your son and, and why is the benefit? What was the benefit of you being circumcised to, to the point that you had to pass that down? You know I mean? Were you really, that's was life so great for you because you were circumcised? And that's on the, on, on top of that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I understand. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, trying to, you know, give you a beating here. Uh, you know, I don't think somebody should have said that you tortured your son. I'm sure that you, uh, love your son and anything that you have to do with your son, it's in his best interest. You know, I, there's no, there's no beef there, but what I'm saying is, well, well, but you were right. You were right though, but but you were right. I did it for no other reason than, than because it was done to me. And that's why, that's why it screwed with me so much is because did I make the, did I make the wrong decision? Am I a butcher for doing this to my son? Um, well, I we're mean, all guilty why, of that in you, some you way. Know, I mean, we have we have these customs passed down to us, and we think that we're doing something uh, because we, you know, we think it's right. Uh, and what we really need to do is kind of ask ourselves, well, why? Why did people do this before me, and why was it done to me? And do I need to do it? You know, um, the the spanking children is another one. Like I. I I would never spank my kids, but I was spanked, you know, and and I'm not just going to do it for no reason without investigating. But, you know, the other thing I want to say is, you know, I, you're giving us a lot of piecemeal arguments and opinions, really not even arguments from different people. One doctor said, ah, the sensitivity is not that big a deal. Another one said that there are studies, um, you know, he's talking about the CDC. 
uh, well, he said know. the CDC. He said the CDC, but then gave opinions of people who were not in the sure. CDC. Sure. Sure. Uh, I didn't hear anything that came from the CDC, and you know, I don't, I don't even know that the CDC would present an argument that would that would make me say, you know, cutting cutting a child's genitalia is not mutilation. Yeah. So, well, let's. No, go I to, want to be go accurate. To website. It's on. It's on their website. Yeah. If you go to the, 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 the CDC and the American um, Association of Pediatrics, uh, well, the American Association of Pediatrics did have a task force for circumcision a couple of years ago, and they reported their findings. Um, and the CDC also has information on their website. Again, their goal is to give people information regarding to make their own decision. They're not going, um, you know, you could, I guess, if, if the CDC's language specifically says it's, it recommends circumcision over not, that's news to me. That doesn't mean it's not there. I just mm -hmm. I haven't heard that. That could be true. Um, but no, I do know that they have information that. regarding. Sorry, Bailey, go ahead. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. They they don't say they don't say that. No. They, don't, they don't recommend it. All the, the only thing they say in uh, and it's a quote uh, is that the benefits outweigh the risks. That the, that's the quote from their website. Yeah, and that could that could very well mean that the risks aren't all that grave, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there are all of these benefits associated with it. You know, um, I think when people kind of come into this discussion about what you know benefit versus risk, they're they're considering risk to be you know something that uh, is is kind of monumental, dangerous even. Uh, well, that might not be the case, you know, uh, and so. I would just say that while we are in this position where we have a child that is in our care and we can either change their body without their consent or not, I would say that the doing doing so uh, not only is it mutilation, but it's just kind of the wrong decision, especially when the roots of that decision are, hey, you know, God, it's because of God and everything like that. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And. You know, Billy, it looks like it's just you and me right now. So, uh, what do you have to say about that? Um, well, well, I don't, I, I didn't take any type of religion. I'm not a religious person at all. Um, so I didn't take religion into account uh, in any way um, whenever it came mm -hmm. to that decision. So, uh, you know, that's not a somebody did. That's not a, you know what I mean? Like some lot, lot somebody people, in your yeah, history right. did. Yeah, but I, but I'm just saying your father was probably circumcised and his father, right? And it was probably a result of religion that's just kind of passed down over and over again. And eventually it lands on us. And we don't even know why or, you know, if the decision made right. was the right one. We just know that the decision was made. Yeah. Right. And it's a Jewish thing. It's isn't it, it's a Jewish thing, right? But I but I'm not Jewish. So I mean It did. How, right, how, right. How did it yeah. How well, it happened when Christianity adopted. Every... Yeah, Christianity, yeah, yeah, Christianity yeah. adopted Judaism and adopted their customs. Yeah. Or, or, or dominant culture through uh, colonialism and you know other means, right? Means that also our practices become standard in other non-Western countries, right? Including that of circumcision, uh, because it's part of the Western medical practice, right? So, um, but, that's that's how that happens. But. But I'm just kind of wondering how was it? I wonder how it was influenced by um, J Jewish culture for for it to be. Because I mean, if 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 it wasn't a, uh, I mean, if it hadn't been um, kind of adopted, then we wouldn't be even having this discussion at all. It might Correct. have died out. The process, the well, procedure might have just died out a long time ago. And I alluded to this. And before the call here, uh, but yeah, there is a, you know, if you look at the New Testament um, and if you look at the, the letters and I understand that, you know, the Bible is not the most interesting book in the world for a lot of people, but there are very serious discussions that are being made. And this made after the, the Bible was finalized in its current form, by the way, um, in early church leadership, but like very serious discussions about circumcision. A lot of you'd be surprised how much the New Testament talks about circumcision, particularly with Paul and and Peter and the other folks, because they identify this as a Jewish practice and they wonder, should we accept those as Christians who aren't circumcised? And <laughs> and Paul's whole point is like, look, they're not they we are all the same and saved in Christ. So circumcision doesn't matter. And you can kind of do this um, and, and be OK sure. with it. But 
it was still kind of like, well, we might as well get it done for a lot of people, right? And so, like, it's it's still adopted to the wider Christian culture. Um, it's sort of like, well, right. you oh, know, you oh. can either do it or not do it. You might as well do it. I think that's kind of the mindset. So, and, yeah. yeah, and it's like, and it's like, and it's like, let's check your penis at the door. Um, yeah, well, at the time, from early Christianity, you're getting adult converts, right? For most of us, it just happened when we we're kids. But for them, it's like, okay, this is where these are adults that are coming in, so you have to get this done later on in life. Uh, so, how, what do you do with that? Oh. Right? It's a little bit more serious, uh, not more serious, but you know, you can't, you you can fight back. Is what I'm saying. You can't fight back when you're well, a baby. I'll so tell, that's yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. If I well, if I did have the option, if I was never circumcised, and then today I had the option of, of being circumcised, I would not do it. I wouldn't do yes. it, period. And I think that's the conclusion so, most people would have. Um, but I, I, that's my speculation. I actually don't know. Maybe there's studies on that, but... Um, there's anyway. a study and, in the Bible so called makes... Genesis where where <laughs> Abraham, uh, Abraham circumcised like 200 of his uh, servants <laughs> as adults. So... Um, yeah, there's that. Being too. an adult doesn't always get you out of it. Yeah, that's also true. It's also true. Uh, Billy, he, any he, more thoughts? He, yeah. Well, Sorry. he's too Go young ahead. for me to ask now. He's too young for me to ask now, but like later, later in life, I mean, I'll ask him because I said that I wouldn't get circumcised if, if I mm -hmm. had the option today to, to do it. But am I a monster for, for doing that to my son? And would I, and I'll ask him whenever he gets older, like, did you, are you okay with me doing this to you? Like, like, how do you feel about I it? I think, uh, and, uh, I don't think a monster Billy is capable of self-reflection. I don't think a monster is capable no. of asking the questions that you're asking yourself right now. I'm not saying what you did was right or wrong. What I'm saying is the fact that you're able to consider that now means that you've at least probably grown and uh, tried to understand what's best care. Thing is, uh, most people aren't like, I don't think most people make good parents. <laughs> a lot of people just don't. And like the fact that you're asking what's best interest for your son is means you're, you must be on the right track somewhere. That's, that's the most I can give, give you today, at least if, if that'll help you sleep at night. Oh. But uh, Billy, I don't think you're yeah, a monster. It, if that helps. It will. That will. Thank you so much, man. And I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate, um, I appreciate the input guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah.